Hello, uh, good morning, Revolution, and welcome everybody to this week at CPUSA. Hey, Scott, how are you? Doing well. How are you, Joe? I'm great. I'm great. Uh, we have a guest this morning. Yep, we are. We are joined by Ada Tuma Suleiman, uh, who is a, a member of Israel's Knesset from the Hadash Coalition, also a member of the Communist Party of Israel and she chairs the Knesset's Committee on Welfare and Employment. Welcome, Ada, we're, we're very happy to have you here. Hi, Ada. Hi, hi, it's so good to be um, talking to you, uh, Scott and Joe, thank you for all this thing. Yes, of course. Well, Scott, we have some questions for Ada. Yeah, well, um, so we thought we might start off just asking about the you know, the, the response to the, the COVID crisis in the United States has been um, both catastrophically bungled and, you know, shown a, like a, a major rise to power or um, advancement of the power of the far right. Um, what's it been like in Israel? How has the response been? Well, it looks like in many other issues, uh, uh, there are a lot of similarities between uh, the situation in the United States and in Israel, at least in the policies. But this time it was a little bit uh, different because uh, uh, I have to admit that we did not uh, have the pandemic very uh, uh, widespread as we expected. Uh, it can be either uh, because of, you know, nobody can explain exactly why uh, we had it uh, in a, let's say severe way, no more. And it is always uh, very bad when we lose people, but it was around 250 uh, people only who were, uh, uh, who died because of the pandemic. And most of the cases are already recovering and doing fine. Uh, some people are saying now we are in the uh, uh, situation of, a re uh, of actually getting through the uh, situation and getting by back to the normal life. Some people say the Israeli uh, Netanyahu's government had dealt with the issue in a good way. Health-wise, we might be in a good situation. Economically, socially, uh, we are expecting a huge crisis that is still in front of us. And some other people would say, well, it's in the whole region, the a pandemic was not though that bad. If you look at Egypt, if you look at Jordan, at Palestine, at uh, uh, Cyprus, you can see that in our region on that side of the world, we were not hit badly uh, uh, with the uh, pandemic. Well, let's wait and see. But politically, I have to say that Netanyahu used the uh, uh, COVID-19 crisis in a very uh, 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 criticized way in order to bring together another, uh, for another time, a government, a very right-wing government, and to use, you know, the uh, 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 issue of crisis and we need to be united and all of that kind of discourse in order. So, Right wing is right wing everywhere. Could you could you walk us through what is happening? So um, I mean, if we measured uh, the democracy of a country by the number of elections it has, Israel would be in the forefront of the world. Uh, but um, so could you walk us through maybe what has happened since the last uh, round of elections? The the sort of power sharing agreement between Netanyahu and and uh, Gantz that I haven't understood very well, I don't think. Well, uh, everybody is trying his best to understand what happened mm -hmm. and, and what is happening still. Because to tell you the truth, it is a very um, a strange situation. Uh, this time elections in Israel were reflecting the deep political crisis and not the democracy for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the uh, we were almost in a deadlock where, where no one is able to compose a government because none of the two 
wanted to take the Palestinian uh, citizens of Israel into the equation, uh, uh, meaning none wanted to have any kind of talks or or uh, a, a, a coalition with the representatives, us of the joint list, which is mainly uh, representing the Palestinian citizens of Israel. But this time, uh, uh, in a very strange way, we, ha we managed to bring more and more Jewish forces to vote for the joint list. Nobody wanted to get near us, neither Netanyahu nor Gans, and they had to, it looks like they were forced into that kind of coalition. Uh, since then, they are trying to form the government. They had to bring changes into four basic laws, which are basic law in Israel is instead of the constitution, sure. it's the basis for the future constitution. They changed four laws, basic laws, in order to enable their coalition to be accepted. They twisted, yes. Wow, yes. that's... Yes, so... and they did it like in a very drastic way, not even giving a chance to the people to discuss the changes that are happening in the, uh, 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 in the regime, let's say, mm. in the uh, democratic uh, formal regime that existed till now. So and now what will happen? Yes. Oh, no, no, please continue, I'm sorry. The government, still not, the government is not still officially not brought to be voted on in the Knesset. Uh, we were supposed to do that uh, on Wednesday. They did not manage to finish all their internal issues because, you know, <laughs> they are, uh, especially the Likud is in a deep problem. Uh, they don't have enough uh, positions for all their senior uh, members. So there's a huge uh, 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 clashes inside the Likud at Netanyahu's uh, uh, party. They postponed it to uh, Thursday, which was yesterday. We traveled to Jerusalem in order to uh, participate in the voting in the parliament. Uh, they opened the session and immediately closed it down because there was another crisis inside the Likud uh, party. So now they are talking about bringing it into voting on Sunday. Let's wait and see. <laughs> wow, that's uh, I, I I hadn't understood the the sort of depths of the the dysfunction within Likud. That sounds extreme. I was really interested to hear that um, more and more uh, Israeli Jews uh, uh, voted for the for the joint list. Um, it's interesting because um, the U.S. media has a tendency to portray Israeli Jews as sort of um, uniformly uh, right wing, you know, under the, the domination of, of the right and the center right. Um, if I could add to that, uh, Ada, when we met last time, you indicated that the Labor Party had lost a lot of support and that Hadash and the joint list was now able to position itself as a genuine left alternative. Uh, I wonder if you could add that to your uh, Scott's uh, uh, question. Yeah, well, um, I think there are uh, real changes that are happening in, in, in the political map in Israel. The traditional, what was so-called uh, Zionist left in Israel is crashing now. Actually, there is a polarization in the political map that is bringing more people under uh, 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 or around center to the far right wing in Israel and other groups who are understanding more and more that the Zionist left parties have never really played a real alter leftist alternative to the right wing and they are losing their faith in these parties. Look what happened after uh, the last election on, uh, in March, where, uh, first of all, both uh, Meretz and uh, the Labour Party had to join together because they were both afraid that they will never go beyond the threshold. They went together 
and actually they did not manage to bring more than uh, 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 six uh, members. While, for example, the joint list had got and gained 15 members. So, the, and then they split down because the Labour Party has joined Gantz and white, uh, blue and white, and now is joining the ultra right wing government. The two members from the Labour Party has split from merits and the coalition they had with merits, and they are joining the right wing government, which means officially the uh, historical Labour Party who was leading the country for many years has vanished. That's mm. it. Uh, uh, we believe that there are very good people who uh, are looking now. And of course, Merit has lost. There are only two members now. And, and there's a lot of problems inside them. That will leave uh, 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 thousands of Jewish uh, uh, community who is looking for a left a, a, a alternative, a, a political home for them. And a, we are managing more and more to see how we are a, a succeeding in putting ourselves as a joint list, as Hadash Party and the Communist Party as the alternative. You can see that symbolically yesterday when there was supposed to be uh, 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 the voting on the government, the only political party who was demonstrating in front of the parliament against the uh, new government was the Communist Party and Hadash. We were the only one who were protesting outside as a political party. The rest were more uh, uh, civil uh, society organizations or kind of groups of people who are hurted by this government. And the, um, the economic and, and social uh, crisis um, surrounding, the, the capitalist crisis surrounding COVID, um, is it your expectation that that will continue this, this process of, of the leftward shift um, in, what, in people? Well, as you know, every crisis uh, can every crisis can be uh, uh, an opportunity uh, to politicize people and to bring them more uh, to understand the uh, relation between the uh, uh, policies led by the government and their uh, uh, personal situation. And it can also be used to uh, uh, make the society uh, more tending to the right or uh, becoming more fascist. It depends very much on how we are going to lead this struggle. And we believe that we need to lead this struggle in a way to make people uh, 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 direct their anger, their stress, their uh, real uh, uh, economic problems toward the responsibility of the Netanyahu's government to this. Uh, you have to understand, the government uh, 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 did not take the proper steps in the beginning of the crisis in order to support people uh, through it. Uh, many of the, uh, they, they continued to act in, you know, in the world more and more after this uh, COVID crisis, People are talking about the values of socialism, values about a different uh, uh, economic policies that uh, uh, take into consideration the human uh, being. In Israel, they continued as if there is no crisis <laughs> with their very severe new liberal, liberal even capitalist uh, 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 approach. They did not allocate enough budgets or money. They, we allocated budgets. The parliament did give allocate a special budget to deal with the problem. They did not get it out to reach the people or the businesses who are almost collapsing. 
one million uh, two hundred thousand uh, uh, new unemployed people were added to that wow. situation. Yeah, part of them are going to join back the uh, employment uh, market, but we believe around twenty percent will become really unemployed after we get back to the normal life. A huge number of uh, small businesses are collapsing. In my in the committee that I'm uh, chairing in the Knesset, believe me, there are stories who break break your heart if you hear them about people who've been working very hard in their life in order to maintain their businesses and to make it profitable, not in a you know in a, in a capitalist way but at least to uh, to live uh, uh, in a decent way. Now they see their businesses are collapsing and the government is not supporting those businesses. Sure, We've no. been, uh, such... yes. Oh no, please, sorry, mm -hmm. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I'm saying we, uh, I've did a lot of work in the committee in order to bring new ideas, how to support uh, also uh, unemployed people and to uh, make the uh, uh, business and the economy start back to act. Some of these are uh, uh, relying on subsidies from the government to businesses to bring back the people, uh, uh, the, their employees, and to subsidize part of the salaries so that the business, so you can guarantee that the uh, uh, grants given by the government to the businesses are getting in some way for the employees and supporting their continuous work. Uh, but uh, for our regret, uh, we have a huge gap between the way we think these crises should be dealt and the government. And you have to understand also that all of that is, is, is come, all this crisis had arrived when there were huge gaps in different, uh, uh, between different communities inside Israel. And some were really uh, 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 discriminated against and excluded in a very difficult way, especially the Palestinian citizens of Israel. And now the crisis is making the gap even wider and, the, and there will be a lot of social problems mm -hmm. that we need to deal with them later. We're having the same kind of problem here, particularly with uh, people of color, uh, immigrants, you know, um, uh, Native Americans, African Americans, Latinos, it's, 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 it's some people are re remembering the petition that Paul Robeson and uh, William Patterson brought to the United Nations charging, charging genocide. Scott, I think we got about five more minutes. You wanted to ask a question about the uh, two-state solution before we end? I did indeed, yes. Um, so uh, there, there, I, I've been hearing from people that, you know, the support for the two-state solution is declining, that, that some no longer see it as uh, as realistic, um, what is the, I mean, it, faced with the, you know, this renewed push for the annexation of the settlements and, and the, the, the so-called uh, Trump peace plan, uh, what, what is the, what is the perspective now on the two-state solution and what is the fight surrounding it? Well, I, I would differentiate between uh, uh, losing support for the two-state solution and, or, or uh, stopping uh, or uh, uh, less people are supporting and the fact that more people are losing hope. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. People, it's not like people do not believe that this is the proper solution. They, they might still think that this is the proper solution, but they are losing hope due to the political situation that it is the reachable uh, solution, that this solution can be implemented, especially when we say that, when we see that Netanyahu's governments 
are heading very quickly toward annexation. It might start beginning of June. The talks here are talking about annexation that can happen uh, in June. I think Netanyahu is going to use two uh, major events or things that are happening in the world so that the annexation will go beyond uh, uh, the radar. Uh, 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 the fact that you're having your uh, elections and uh, uh, in the United States and Trump is, is, uh, is, uh, Trump's situation is not uh, uh, at least yeah. till now shows uh, that it is deteriorating. Uh, and and uh, Netanyahu understands very well that if he needs to implement the annexation, he needs Trump to be in the White House. So he might uh, uh, make it even uh, um, uh, faster so that he can use the time that is still in front of him. The other thing is the world is very busy with the COVID uh, crisis. And I don't see that countries, the, the most important countries in this situation, uh, 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 Britain or, or uh, France or Germany, uh, will be able to uh, take their sides of what is happening inside their countries and the crisis they are facing in their countries and to deal in supporting the Palestinians against the annexation. It worries me very much. We understand that now while we are talking tonight, there's a, a very important meeting of the uh, uh, foreign ministers of the European Union uh, about the annexation. Uh, we hope that it will, we, will be beyond the fact of you know declarations and we are not supporting. We believe that if this annexation happens, uh, that's really a major uh, strike on the uh, uh, Palestinian issue. And it, it, it might be uh, very true that more and more people will stop believing that you can change it back. Because, you know, people here see what happened when they annexated Jerusalem. Mm. And we see on the ground what is happening in Jerusalem. The whole demography and geographically, uh, uh, geographic uh, 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 facts are changing uh, through the process. We see what happened with the Syrian Golans. A Golan territory, which is, was annexed by Israel. Uh, does the world remember that the Golan is still Syrian? Do the, do the world uh, uh, really is punishing Israel for uh, uh, this annexation, which is a war crime? No. So this is what worries us that this window uh, uh, of time and opportunity that is existing in front of Netanyahu will be used. And 10 or five years later, uh, we will say, oh, but we were against that. And, and but the things will, will change dramatically if annexation happens. Well, I think that just about does it. Ada, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's great to see you. We wish uh, you, you and uh, your party and the uh, people of Israel, both Arab and Jewish, every success in your struggle. Uh, we hope you get back here soon. I know you were planning to come back uh, regularly. After you finish with COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. We're going to work hard to do it, but we, it's a little bit uphill. It's a little bit of an uphill struggle. <laughs> so, no, yeah, well, we, take we, care of yourself. We will. We will. Thank you. We wish you all all be weekend. safe. Yes. And I will see you again soon. All the best. Thank Kat, you, that Beautiful daughter of yours. Uh, goodbye, and we'll see you next week. Take yeah. care. Thank you. Bye-bye.